Hello, this is Mike Poche, and today I want to go over a QNAP 10 gigabit switch. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and don't forget that notifications icon so you'll be notified of future content. QNAP released a uh, 10 gigabit switch right around mid 2019, around July, August time frame. And I just recently got my hands on one which I purchased myself for uh, my particular home setup. I have a couple of 10 gigabit switches here, but um, this particular one was intended because it's going to go in my entertainment center where I can actually have access to 10 gig connections as well as a pipeline for 1 gigabit connections. So let's go over the basic uh, layout and then we'll go ahead and put it through its paces a little bit, run a couple tests, make sure it's performing the way I expect it to, and then we'll go from there. Now this switch is sort of unique. It's in a relatively low cost range. Uh, it's probably not the cheapest, but um, it's certainly in the same price range as the ASUS and the uh, Netgear switches, which have far less 10 gigabit ports. The only downside is this particular switch has one combo port here, which shares. So you can either use, um, you know, copper RJ45 type connection, or you have to use the um, SFP Plus. Now, they do make these adapters, which uh, we'll go into a little bit, which actually convert these um, type of SFP Plus connections into allowing you to use copper, which is what I'm going to be using. The downside of that is you have to buy a separate device. So, even though this is a really low cost switch, if you have to add a couple of these, it you know right raises the price a little bit. But these are fairly reasonable, um, and I'll add links down below so you can get it. Check out any of these items if you want. But um, it's this is sort of a unique styling. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the color, but um, for the most part, I really like the way they have this laid out. A couple other things I want to point out is that this is actually fanless, so um, it's not going to make any noise at all. The construction on the back is pretty much all metal. You know, this this is what they're using to dissipate some of the heat from the 10 gigabit chipset. And then on the top here is the actual power supply. So even though this looks like it's a, a um, design thing, it's um, actually where the power supply comes in. So you have a power supply that actually plugs into this. It's a brick style. So you don't have any fans or anything spinning for the power supply either. Um, that's pretty much it. It's a really simple layout. This is a not a managed switch. This has eight gigabit ports here. And then you have um, three 10G ports with one of those being a combo switch or a combo port, I mean. Before we get into testing, um, I wanted to show you more about these adapters. Now these are, as I mentioned, these are SFP Plus adapters that convert the um, the SFP Plus type connector into a uh, RJ45. Um, these actually fit into, they're somewhat universal, there's a couple of different standards, so you have to kind of look and see what type you need. But uh, again, I'll put some links down below, so if you wanted to check these out. And these basically allow you to convert the SFP Plus on either a NAS or um, a switch or even a uh, PC card to allow you to use copper. So basically how these work is pretty simple. You uh, basically slide these in, click them down and that's it. To pull them out, there's a little release tab here you can pull down and actually releases it and allows you to slide it out. So that's all there is to it. Um, it's now converted that port to a, um, a copper. So now I can use a traditional Cat7 cable and connect it to whatever it is I'm going to connect it to. So let's get into testing. Okay, so to establish a baseline, I'm going to actually, I've hooked up uh, two computers, both with NVMe drives directly to my main 10 gig switch and we'll establish the you know the basic performance of copying a large file from one computer to an act to the next and, and use that as the baseline. I realize it's not super scientific, 
but it'll give us a comparison of how the um, two switches compare and whether or not it's working correctly. And also, just to also set the baseline, this entire test is all being run through CAT7, both patch cables as well as the uh, my main feed into the wall back to the switch. So, um, it you know, to rule out any potential cable issues. So let's go ahead and copy the first test. So let's copy that and paste it in here. So we're off to a pretty good start. Um, we're certainly fluctuating north of 500 with peaks up there reaching 8 to 900. Okay, so... Um, so that was the um, first test. And again, this is the, my existing configuration. And now my plan is to actually hook up both of these computers to the new QNAP switch. And we'll see using the same files if we get approximately the same performance. Okay, I have now um, hooked up those same two computers directly into the QNAP. And I'll show you the configuration here in just a second. And we're now going to repeat the test to see if we get very similar performance. So we're going to recopy this file into a fresh directory. And as you can see, it's kind of moving right along. It's actually even a little faster. We see the usual buffering um, once the memory fills up. So there you have it. Very similar curves um, with arguably this new switch slightly faster than my um, main switch, which has a lot more things attached to it. So there's a lot more traffic going through it. But nevertheless, this seems to perform uh, slightly faster. So again, this is all hooked up with Cat7 everywhere. So, um, you know, there's no very, there's not too many variables in terms of cabling or any other any other uh, concerns. So that's about it for the test. I'm not going to do any more. I just wanted to verify that the, you know, the throughput of the switch is comparable to uh, my current switch. Um, as you know, there's a lot of variables in 10 gigabit. Um, you've got overhead concerns. You've got cabling concerns. You've got issues with, or not issues, but um, some overhead on your drives, some overhead on your you know your system depending on what drive it's attached to there's a lot of things going on so the you know the testing will vary slightly depending on what you're doing and how much is happening on your network at the time but the punchline is it seems to be going certainly equally as fast and arguably faster so um, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't already done so please subscribe and I will leave some affiliate links down at the bottom for any of the things that we covered today, including patch cables I used and the wall cable I used. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you on the next video.